welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a cash or policy envelope using just one sheet of paper and these tools here. Okay, some of them are optional, some of them you don't need to use, namely the ink, the brads, the hole punch and the twine. You don't need those items but pardon me I'm going to show you how to do it and then I will talk to you about the optional extras <laughs> if you like okay you want your sheet of paper to be twice the width plus a quarter of an inch of your policy document so it's, this is a six by six inch piece of paper and it's made me an envelope that is about three by two I think it were turned out being okay that is what a six by six piece of paper will do for you to start you turn your piece of paper over overlap by about a quarter of an inch okay and then work out where the middle is going to be on that line it all up and fold it okay if you prefer to fold individually let go of one sheet do one fold and then do the other if to you that will be neater okay you can if you wish to use a bone folder to help burnish your folds down then bring your second piece up overlap by about a quarter of an inch and make your crease again use your bone folder right so how do we make the rest of the document uh, do I keep calling it a document it's not it's an envelope you want to fold over the bottom bit by about that much <laughs> I don't measure okay um, for the sake of argument I would tell you what it is but I can't find my real oh there we go so this is roughly half an inch at the bottom okay fold it over don't stick anything down yet don't worry about anything else your top part you want to fold over at a, a roughly about an inch okay again don't worry about burnishing or anything else now unfold it and get your corner rounder I use the widest corner. This is one of the three corner out three, you know, it does three three different sizes. I use the 10 mil one. If you're using a uh, cropper dial, use the half inch, which gives you the wider corner. And round off your four corners. Like so. Now, if you want the grungy look, don't forget to ink it up. Use some vintage photo distress ink. Actually, no, we're not doing that just yet. Sorry, I apologise. I want to cut your bits off. Now, we do not need <clears throat> the four end flaps. So cut them off. Do not discard them. Not yet. Okay. So cut down to where your creases all meet you obviously won't have to go as far on the bottom bit now on the bottom bit I come in probably about an eighth of an inch from the from this crease line yeah so there's my crease line and I come in about an eighth of an inch and you want to cut to the crossover point at your creases. Okay, same on the other side. On the top bit, I come in a little bit further than that. So I come in probably about a quarter of an inch.
Right. Now, you want to ink up all your bits and bobs. Burnish all your folds to get all the creases good. Don't worry about those spare bits of paper just yet. I'm going to be using those if you want to do the twine closure on your envelope. Okay, so get it burn, burnish all your uh, ink up all your creases. Don't forget front and back because obviously this is something you know people are going to be seeing. So now you should end up with something that looks roughly like that. So I have inked up all the way around the outside and I've inked all four creases, okay? So that when it's assembled, you've got your slightly grunged looking. And obviously the more you ink it, the grungier it's going to look, you know? And if you really are into really making it look you know then get in there and get it quite dark you know maybe try a darker stain than the vintage photo i like the vintage photo i find it quite uh subtle now you need to attach a brad in the middle of your <laughs> envelope i'll get there in a minute so get your a hole punch I like to use the smaller side the 1 8 side and eyeball it don't come in too far I punch my hole now what I do is I fold the envelope closed and I get a pencil and I mark where I punched I open it up, see I almost didn't go in far enough there. And it doesn't really matter on the inside one. Punch that as well. Now, when you close your envelope, your two holes should more or less match up. Mine's a little bit off, but that's fine. Now, You want to do your holes for the, um, to go behind the brands, these bits. Obviously take into account the size of your brads and the size of your hole punch. I'm quite unlucky. I've only got very, very small or very, very large. So I'm gonna go with very, very large just to make it easier to show you what I'm doing, okay? Now, remember those big flaps that you cut off of your envelope? You want to cut those into circles. Using the big hole punch, you should be able to get one out of each, each flap. Okay, cut them out. Don't forget to ink them. Definitely want to ink these, otherwise it won't look as good. What I do is put them back to back and then just ink all around them. Just helps give them a bit of strength. Okay, so you've now got your two circles that are well and truly inked. And we need to attach them. First off, you need to start off by gluing your, um, your long edge closed so this is just a scrappy notebook lay it so that your inside flap is uppermost and run a bit of tape or some glue down one edge don't worry about making it too neat just as long as it's not overlapping so that when you close it there you go now don't forget about your two holes here. You now want to punch a 
another hole into the center of these. So line up roughly where you think the center is and boom. Don't make your brads too tight <laughs> because then you won't be able to wrap your twine around. Leave one hole, one piece of, of, of that you've just punched out. <laughs> Thread your brad through. Now, if it's easier when you come to actually fix this into place, you might want to actually wrap a bit of twine between the there and your envelope underneath the circle that you've punched and your envelope thread your brad through reach inside and open the little leggy bits if you can it might be easier i found this easier when i was making one earlier like i said get your bit of get your bit of twine and turn the whole kit and caboodle upside down so that your brad is on a tabletop. Wrap your twine around. Wrap it around a couple of times to make it nice and put it on a on a on a tabletop and then you can use your fingers in either way to open the brad up inside. You've got to sort of now <laughs> once you've opened your brad inside you want a bit of tape inside because if you try and slide some money in that it's going to get caught on the brad so the best thing to do is to get a bit of invisible tape or just regular tape okay you want it the length of your brad and a little bit more so that it sticks down really really well now what I do is I again turn my envelope upside down and I slide it in so that the tape is lying across the opposite side yeah and then while I'm looking I close it down inside while I look down and then I can release my finger from the other way press down and hey presto you see it's covered up in there with some tape right. and that should now protect your money from anything you slide in and out because the tape will just guide it over nice and easy now we want to stick the bottom bit in place all a little burnish down okay so finally you want to add on oh, I actually ripped mine a little bit oh, that just adds to the grunginess of it doesn't it now you want to add on your last brad so get it all threaded up and ready line it up roughly where you want it to be I mean if you if you really like anal and you want it to be in exactly the same place you could use a t-square and do it like that it should make it roughly about there if it bothers you if it ends up wonky i've just lost my ruler because it fell off right so now punch your final hole Thread your brad and your bit of paper into place. Don't forget about your bit of twine. So put your twine underneath that bit of paper. Yeah. And wrap it round at least once around the whole thing. Because then that gives you the leeway that you need. when you open the legs and again put it on a put it on a table and open it up that way just helps keep the whole thing in place 
Okay, now, if you find that unsightly, then you could use a piece of decorative washi or um, you could, sorry, I'm a bit tangled up, my twine's got a bit tangled, or you could, um, if you have any more of this paper, you could actually mat it if that, you know, if that is what you want to do. Um, I don't have any spare. Um, you could also just stick a piece of the paper itself down, which I think looks a bit odd. Personally, I'm just going to stick a little bit of tape down. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. I think if I cut this maybe from a bigger piece of paper, I would perhaps mat it. You know? Oops. Just drop my tape. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink the inside of that seam. Just to give it and the inside of the flap because obviously this is one that I'm going to open more than once. Okay. Like so. Then get your bit of tape. Like I said, you don't have to use tape. You could use washi. You could use a bit of paper just to mat it. Whatever you like. I mean, the trouble is with tape, obviously it creases and not everybody likes that, you know, but you can get your uh, bone folder in and give it all a good squish about. Okay, there you go. Now you want to do is add your string or your twine or whatever to the top, tie a knot in it, and then it stops it coming off completely and disappearing, which, you know, happens quite a lot. So once you've crossed, once you've crossed it, tie a knot and tie it right up tight under that brad. So it's not, it's not going to go anywhere, you know. Now you can leave your little bit hanging there if you like that kind of thing. I personally don't, so I'm going to trim it right up underneath so you can't see it and now all you do to close it is just wrap it around most people use a crisscross method method and there you go one envelope finished so which were the optional extra bits your two brads your extra bits of circle and your twine your um tape and your ink were all optional extras you can just make a straightforward envelope that is sealable that you only seal once so if if your kid is has got to take some money in for a school trip for example um let's do let's find a nice summery star should we do cocktails or oh i know there were birds yeah there we go this is also gives me a chance to teach you about the um being aware of the direction of your paper as well again fold it giving yourself that quarter of an inch overlap okay and getting it so that it is roughly in the middle Burnish your edges. Now, the, obviously, get to the, your bottom of the of the envelope and fold up the required amount. Top part of the envelope and fold that over. You could burnish it if it makes you feel better. Might make seeing your creases a little bit easier. Take your corner rounder. Now some people just punch the corner, um, cut the corners, but that to me just doesn't look professional, you know? So, round your corners off, now open it out. 
if you're having trouble seeing it because of the pattern turn it over you can see your creases really really well on the other side so come down each side of the flaps to the crossover point and same at the bottom now with the bottom come in about an eighth of an inch and cut up to the corner same on the other side for the top come in a little bit more than that just to make it easier to grab your um, contents out of the envelope if you want to you can line it all up to make sure that you are cutting roughly in the same place so if I was doing it that way I would be wanting to cut up through the tail like so just to get it so that it's neatly oops don't peel your paper trim it properly and now all you do is you just glue it closed so start off with that side yeah so do your thin layer of glue down your long flap when you glue the bottom do not glue the entire flap otherwise you will glue the bottom of your envelope closed you literally want to glue it along the edge okay so I just use the very edge of my glue stick just to probably don't even cover half of it and then you just fold it closed so what about the top what if you want to give this to somebody for them to put something in well that's where double-sided tape comes in grab your bit of tape find the end because that's always a challenge you are running the risk with this of it perhaps gluing the top down so you may want to use a smaller piece of tape if you're worried about this or you know cut your tape in half don't use too wide a bit so for example use a thinner piece of tape because this is quite thick and i wouldn't want to glue my envelope together with that. And the good thing about tape is you can actually re-stick it back to itself which is fab and then just glue it along the edge of your uh, stick it down along the edge of your flap burnish it in place now when the person is ready or when you are ready i mean you could make a whole batch of these um just stick it off and seal it closed and bob's your uncle um you've got a nice little cash envelope for school or whatever you know to go in your journals if if you if you are a journaler i mean i like i must admit i do like the grunge look i love this because it means that i can open and close it i wouldn't bother with this with all the tabs if i was making a cash envelope for school um and i probably would make one about half the size for school i might make a set of those up it would make them quite small um let's have a go shall we let's use this paper because I can't say that I'd use this paper for an awful lot okay yeah that should work so cut your paper to three inches
<clears throat> Fold it as you did before. It's going to make a wee fat envelope. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of shot there, aren't I? Fold it as you did before. This would be ideal just for schools, wouldn't it, you know? Okay, it would make a sort of sideways type envelope. But, you know, what the hell, why not? Good what I just did. She just gave me kids. <laughs> did she? Yeah. Okay, off you go. Don't forget corners. They're all gone if you go. Hmm. That's going to end up. You probably won't have to trim that one. <laughs> I never thought of making a mini, mini one before. Yeah, it's practically done your, uh, your flat bits for you. I didn't cut that very well, did I? Oops. Yes, you'd have to be very, very careful. I cut that a little bit too, uh, too steep. <laughs> Make a little fat envelope, or a little sideways envelope. That could be quite cool. Yes, I would have to be very, very careful there because I did uh, cut that a bit too much. So I should, I should just uh, glue each corner, I think. Made a mess with my glue stick. <laughs> so there you go. That's that's that one. Yep. Make an ideal little, you know, just for your one pound for school lunch or something. You know. And then again, you can stick your bit of double-sided tape on it. Probably only need half of that, really. Okay. So yeah, that was actually quite a lot easier than I thought it would be. I just overcut in a few places. So, I mean, you can always
overlap it a little bit more if you don't want it to be quite as wide an envelope so you know then I would perhaps cut the excess off because that way you've got the width that you want you know so I would mark with a pencil that that flap reaches there Uh, pardon my son informing the entire world that we're going to the toilet so that's your one flap and then that could be cut about there like so trim your edges uh, your corners yeah you can do this before you fold it actually if you want to there's no law that says it has to be um after folding This is going to make such a little fat envelope. <laughs> oh dear. And then just open it all up and again cut off your... Don't forget, because it's obviously quite a small envelope, don't cut your, um, your bits too far in because it will... Um, make it harder to actually assemble your envelope sorry I keep going out short and I am so bad at that okay so just a little bit of glue makes that bit closed and then a little bit of glue and cross your end there which will then close that bit and if you if if you are worried about it coming undone burnish your glue down you know help reinforce your things and then your tape did i drop my tape no i dropped that tape oh it's there put the envelope in front of it <laughs> Then get your double sided tape and stick that in the middle, you know, or wherever. So, there you go, there's a whole bunch of envelopes I have made for you in various different sizes, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah that's one I made earlier on but I made the um, the uh, I made it too tight this is what happens when you make it too tight is you can't actually wind your yarn around it yeah it won't hold very well so you know that's a demo one that's fine but there you go there's your different envelopes this is a grunged up one which will do good you know will look great in any journal i think um you could get, get oh you could get a piece of like coffee stained paper uh, that's 
one's got writing on it. You know, maybe um, cut it out with a fancy die cut and put that on the front of that because it's coffee stained. It will add to the whole uh, grunge look to it. You've got a nice plain one there. And then you've got two itty bitty ones. This one is reusable due to the tie. These ones aren't. Once you've stuck them down, that's it. They're stuck until somebody opens them. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> I hope you found this informative. Um, I'm sorry I was a bit all over the place. I do tend to be. And I apologise for the background noise, but, you know, I have a five-year-old. <laughs> um, if you have any comments, questions or anything down below, please, please do feel free to um, let me know. Put them all down below there and um, I'll answer them as best I can. If there's anything else you've seen that you want me to have a go at, you know, to demonstrate, let me know. I'm always, always willing to um, have a play, especially if it's something that I personally can use. I will use coin envelopes, you know, until the cows come home. So, yeah. Take these guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, don't forget the thumbs up. <laughs> and I will see you next time.